Hello and welcome to the Nikivo Backup and Replication tutorial video series on the Site Recovery functionality. By watching these videos, you can learn how to set up, test, and run Site Recovery workflows. In the previous video, we created VM replicas for the purposes of disaster recovery. In this video, we move on to creating the recovery workflow itself. Before building your workflow, you need to define the scope of the planned recovery. Do all VMs need to be recovered ASAP? or are there some that have lower priority? Would this job run during planned migrations or just in emergency situations? Do you have your recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives defined? Answering these questions can help determine the appropriate scope and sequence for the particular workflow. Once you have the answers, you can proceed to building the site recovery workflow itself. In the main UI, select Create and choose Site Recovery Job under the Site Recovery Orchestration section. Here you can see the main interface for the site recovery functionality with a list of all the actions that you can incorporate. You might want to start off by stopping the VMs at the DR site. This helps free up resources for failover. Select the Stop VMware VMs action and choose the relevant VMs. In the Action options, you can specify that this step should be included in both testing and production modes of your site recovery job. After that, you may want to make sure that no other jobs are currently running so as not to interfere with the failover process. Choose the Stop Jobs action and mark the jobs that run automatically on schedule. This makes the failover process more reliable. Next, you can select the Fail Over VMware VMs action to transfer workloads to VM replicas at your DR location. Select the relevant replicas and make sure that Power Off Source VMs is selected to avoid errors. After the failover is finished, you can have the product wait for the replicas to finish booting by using the wait action. Selecting two minutes should give every VM sufficient time. After that, you can add a run script action and upload a script that fits your recovery purposes. You can then choose run jobs as the concluding action. This action ensures that all of the jobs you stopped earlier are restarted after site recovery finishes running. Select the relevant jobs and click save. Now that you have finished setting up your actions, you can proceed to configuring network mapping and re-IP. We showed you how to set up network mapping and re-IP rules in detail in the previous video about replication. Every workflow needs to be tested to remain reliable. Therefore, you are asked to set up a testing schedule for your site recovery job. Alternatively, you can test the job manually only when needed. Finally, specify a name for your new job and set the RTO for testing purposes. You can also choose to get detailed reports about site recovery job runs delivered to you by email. This concludes our demo on creating a recovery workflow with site recovery. In the next video, we are going to show you how to perform testing of your site recovery jobs. Download the full-featured free trial and test the solution in your environment.